much for being on my show. My pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> I'm honored. I'm from a place called Newport News, Virginia, which is down below the Mason-Dixon line, like ah. maybe four hours south of Washington, D.C. Started playing the drums when I was four, and uh, due to my father, who was an ex-drummer, and uh, he was, uh, uh, by that time he had stopped playing the drums when I came along, but uh, he was a, a pretty avid jazz lover, and he had a really, you know, wonderful record collection, and he played records around the house and things like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I heard the music ever since I can remember. And uh, and so I somehow I naturally gravitated towards the drums, and uh, that's that's really been it ever Gosh. since. Um, by that at that time, like when you were in the fourth grade, you could join the school band. Okay. So I had already been playing the drums on my own. You know, I had I had a, had a drum set, a couple of drum sets by that time, and. And my dad kind of showed me how to hold the sticks and showed me had showed me how to do. So I joined the school, you know, like the elementary school band, you know, and that's when I learned how to read music because at that time the band directors were kind of, I think, I guess they're still like that. They they were kind of like, they could kind of play a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, you you know, they give you like a, you know, I don't know, Haskell W. Har drum book or a Ludwig drum method, or one of those kind of books that were just kind of, you know, show you a whole note, and then half note, and, you know, yeah. <laughs> quarter yeah. note, eighth yeah. note, you know, blah, 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 like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, just, you know, that's that's kind of, that's the form, the, the first formal introduction to, you know, like music, uh, you know, like, basics, you know, of, of reading music, that sort of thing. That it didn't have anything to do with the drum set, you know, it had more to do with, uh, you know, like, you know, learning how to read music. And so you're playing in concert band and things like that, yeah. you know. And, you know. Yeah, yeah, in high school they had what they call stage band, you know, and uh, so that's where we were, we were doing. At that time, uh, it was like um, Sammy Nestico, the big band charts, mm -hmm. and uh, at that time, like Woody Herman's band and Maynard Ferguson's band, and uh, those kind of. My band director was into that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. so we were we were we were kind of playing on playing that kind of playing that kind of stuff, you know. But um, Outside of school, I was playing in bands and around and around my neighborhood and around the, the the town that I lived in. We were playing not jazz. We were playing mainly like funk and R and B and soul music. They called it back then. We called it soul music. We were playing that kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. Graham Central Station and Cool and the Gang yeah. and uh, you know that sort of thing. And then also right around that time. Uh, well, what was happening in music around around that time was really, really good because there was a lot of things that were just new, you know, they were just, you know, like, for example, like um, Mahavishnu Orchestra and uh, those kinds of groups, Weather Report, and so all of that stuff was happening. And then this, the... the, the uh, Straight ahead jazz stuff was was ha you know Freddie Hubbard and McCoy Tyner and all that stuff was happening and uh, and then you know then then the you know the the soul music that was happening you know where there were bands and stuff Earth Wind and Fire and you know those were bands where guys were playing instruments you know right. Ohio players and all that all that was going on you know. So all of that stuff was kind of swirling around, and then in my house, my dad was listening to Miles and Jimmy Smith and Jackie McLean and Max Roach and that stuff. So I, you know, all this stuff was yeah, kind of huh? happening. You know, we're talking about the early seventies. You know, yeah. all this stuff was kind of, you know what I mean, kind yeah. of happening like that. And, uh, it was a great, really fertile, you know, fertile time. You know, and it was all new and you know exciting because. 
you didn't have any inclination as to what was going to happen until the the actual recording came out. You know, it, it would come out. You know, there was no pre-listening. There was no. You know, there was no. You know, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was really good. So we were. You know, we, it it was very. Uh, I don't know, it's stimulating, you know. You were you were you were easily stimulated, you know. To a, a conservatory, a small conservatory in Northern Virginia called Shenandoah Conservatory. And it was for uh, it started off the first two or three years I was there as a, a you know, a classical percussion major. They didn't even have a jazz program. In the last year or two they started a jazz program. But there was still no jazz drum teacher there, so I was basically just taking like piano jazz theory and that sort of thing, and I was playing in the jazz ensemble there, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, but I had already been playing the drums already, you know, for quite some time before I got there, and I had, prior to that I had taken I was I had taken private lessons. Um, for for snare drum and classical classical snare drum and a little bit of mallets and stuff with a guy down in Virginia and um and that helped me in when I was in high school to like be in like a you know like you'd audition for all city band and all state band and stuff you know to to, to play the snare drum right. or something you know right. so you know so he was he was really good this guy named Win Winfrey I don't know where he is now but uh, he was really, uh, he was really a great teacher for that kind of thing, you know. And uh, so, you know, we were doing, you know, you know, rudimental stuff and Wilcoxon stuff and uh, um, uh, all Fred Albright yeah. book and uh, Anthony Cerrone, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, all that kind of stuff yeah. that was that was around back then. It's still around now, but yeah, yeah. you know, those were kind of like the the you know some of the main snare drum books at that time you know this is when I was probably 14 15 you know yeah yeah uh -huh. I went home um and I started playing around you know locally where I live where I grew up and uh and then uh you know I was playing basically quote unquote jazz gigs and then uh, and then I joined a what they call top 40 I joined a top 40 band and uh, this top forty band had a uh, had like a house house gig, uh, playing five nights a week in a club. You know, we just we we would learn two songs off the radio every week, and we you know, and people would come and dance, yeah. and we were playing. And, and yeah, it was it was it was. I and mean, looking back on it, it was good. It was the thing to do because at that time, I had felt like the you know playing. Playing so-called jazz down there was very limited in the quality and the compensation, yeah. you know. And I knew that I wanted to to leave you yeah. know, the area, yeah. so I spent about almost four years in this top forty band because it was regular work. It was you know it was every week, five nights a week. Yep. You know, okay. it wasn't jazz. And on my nights off, I would. I would play jazz, you know, when when if there was something that I could do, you know. But uh, but this was, you know, and it was really good musicians, you know. There were good, all the guys in the band were really good musicians, not necessarily jazz musicians, but really good musicians. One of the guys, the bass player that was in the band, is, is a very well-known bass player now, named O'Teal Burbridge. He plays with, uh, well, he was playing with the uh, Almond Brothers mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Tedeschi trucks and all that. And, okay. And uh, he's really electric bass player. But uh, anyway, so he was in the band too, you know. And so, uh, yeah. So it was uh, it was cool. Yeah. Right after that, yeah. Well, I saved up enough money, and my my idea was that I saved up enough money basically to be able to pay my rent. Because I, you know, I, I kind of was making connections while I was still down there. I was. Coming up to New York, I've told this story before, but I was coming up to New York whenever I had days off. You know, not not every every time that I had days off, but uh, there was an airline that was really inexpensive, and from where I lived to New to Newark was twenty three dollars one way. 
So, and I was working, you know, and at that time rent was very cheap down there and everything. So, so I would come up to New York to just hang out to see, you know, to see people play. And I, I met, um, I met a bunch of people and I, and, uh, I, uh, I had met Al Foster up here, and uh, so I used to come and see him play. At that time, he was playing a lot at the, he was playing with everybody, man. He was playing with, I don't know, he was playing with Herbie Hancock, McCoy Tyner, Sonny Rollins, you know, all the people around New York, Hank Jones, Steve Kuhn. You know, he was, he was, he was playing with everybody, man, and so, and he was he was like a guy who I really 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 loved, you know. I still do. I still love him. And he's he's a huge huge mentor of mine and influence. And so so and then so I was, you know, and then somehow somebody that I knew was living up here and they were like there's a there's a spot for you to live if you want to do it and I just jumped at the chance and I just said, "Okay, I'll do it, man." So my idea was, okay, I'll, I have enough money to, to, to make the rent. I figured out, you know, I can make the rent, and even if I don't get any gigs, I'll, I'll be able to be here for at least a year, and i see people play and try to just interact with somebody or people, you know, and, you know, like that, you know what I mean, like that. And, uh, and it, you know, it worked out really well, you know. I, you know, I was young at that time, and I had the energy for that, and I really wanted to do it, you know. And so, uh, but you know, it worked out that I, 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 it didn't take, it didn't take but a couple of weeks, and I got a gig, and, and that really propelled me into, um, being able to, to rub shoulders with people that were, very much established, and, you know, some people my age, people that had, were my age that had been here before long before me or you know some years before me and had had st were starting to make their you know make their mark you know but we were the same age but they were ahead of me in terms of having been here you know right. and had having the experience of playing with all these um, uh, wonderful musicians and things like that so um, by that happening then that kind of helped me to even uh, become more um, Involved with uh, uh, like-minded, like-minded people that were actually, you know, doing it, you know, and then being exposed to, you know, some of these really iconic, you know, people. That... Well, I'm not sure if it was the first, but one of the early things that I did, you know, after I had been in 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 New York for six months or so, was I got to play with Joe Henderson. And that was really, 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 really special for me because at that time he was, I mean, he was amongst the musicians in New York. He was at the top of the heap, wow. you know, and uh, and so um, to you know to be like brand new on the scene and be able to play with Joe Henderson was like a pretty, you know, it was yeah. pretty. It opens the door for. Oh, it was a heavy, 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 heavy. <laughs> heavy, you know, shoes, you know, and I was subbing for Al Foster, and he was, you know, like my, you know, yeah, you know, there he is up there, oh, yeah. up there. Yeah, there. and and um, so yeah, so then and then you know, like I said, that led to playing with other people and this, that, and the other, and so I was real fortunate, man.